Hey guys, just a quick announcement before we get today's video started. A lot of you have been asking me where the top 10 countdowns have been. Trust me, I have been working on them. I have actually just been a little lazy getting the process done. There are two in the works right now as far as the writing process. I promise they will be out within the next month or so. Well, with that said, let's get this video started. So, here's something new, Crow Reviewing Video Games. <laughs> well, I've done these type of videos before, like when I tried to do the first impressions video, but today I kind of wanted to do a somewhat full review of a video game that just recently came out, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Now, for those that don't know, I am a pretty big Power Rangers fan. I grew up watching them, the original Mighty Morphin series, and I kind of grew in and out as the series expanded on to different teams. Even though I tried my best to keep up with it, I don't watch every single season, but I try to keep up with the times. So when I heard there was a Power Rangers fighting game coming out, I was pretty excited and wanted to give it a shot. And after spending a few hours with this game, I wanted to give my two cents of what I thought about this game. Now please keep in mind, this is completely my biased opinion, except for the first part of this review, which is going to be the synopsis going over what the story of the game is, the gameplay, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll go into what I think is good about the game, what is bad about the game, and then my final thoughts. So let's get this review started. So Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is a 3 versus 3 fighting game. You get a pick from a select number of Power Rangers and even a couple of villains from the series. Now, if some of these characters you don't recognize, don't worry, I'll explain a little bit here. Because some of these characters are actually derived from the Power Rangers comics, which has a completely different storyline from any of the different Power Rangers series that you've watched on television. It's characters such as Lord Draken. Now, Lord Draken is a version of Tommy Oliver, who we all know is the Green Ranger from the original Mighty Morphin series, that never strayed away from the path of evil. And he became this entity who combined the powers of the Green Ranger with the White Ranger and made this, honestly, just, I'm going to gush a little bit here, this amazing looking outfit. I think this is probably one of the coolest looking characters in all of Power Rangers. Just my own personal opinion. So what's going on is that Lord Draken is trying to access the Morphing Grid and control it as his own. And it's up to the Power Rangers in order to stop him. As far as gameplay goes, you have three basic attack buttons, your X, Y, and B on the Xbox One, and then your A button which acts as a special attack. You can enhance this attack by using your super meter down below. You can pull off better combos with two bars full. You can actually activate your special move. And in a pinch, whenever one of your characters on your team is taken out, you can gain access to one of two Megazords or a giant Golar to help you out in the fray. So here's what I really like about the game. First off, the gameplay. It's extremely simplistic for other fighting games. You don't have to sit there and memorize a bunch of string combos and stuff. It's extremely simplistic to pick up and just play. Yes, there's a huge list of moves that you can learn, but you don't necessarily have to do that. This is more for advanced players that get really into the fighting game scene. The graphics in this game are actually really good as well. I know a lot of people are complaining about it, saying that it looks too much like the mobile game that it's based off of, but honestly, it looks like they're pretty polished, and for a current generation game, it actually looks pretty sweet. Another complaint that I've heard is that it looks a little too cartoony and it needs to look more realistic. Well, people, I hate to break it to you, but Power Rangers is intended for kids. It is going to look a little cartoony. And honestly, the fact that they kept with that style, I really like that. They're actually sticking with their guns on their artistic output, saying, hey, these characters are based on a kid's show. We need to make them look a little cartoony, not as serious. And, you know, I got to applaud them for that. Another thing I really like about this game is each character actually feels different in combat. One of the big things people were worried about was that each character, considering that almost every single one of them is a Power Ranger, the combat was going to feel too samey. 
but that's not the case. Each Power Ranger has their own diverse weapon, their own fighting style, so it's really nice to get a variety of characters. Also, each character has a different color scheme. Some characters even have different costumes. For example, Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, having his Bat in the Sun costume from Super Power Beatdown, which looks incredible, by the way. Also, some characters with their costume change even changes the character themselves. Say, for example, you pick the Ranger Slayer. One of her alternate costumes is the actual original Mighty Morphin Pink Ranger outfit. So that could technically count as a different character, even though they have the same play style. Okay, now for the stuff that I don't like about this game, and this is probably going to take up a bit more time because there is a lot to go over here. So, the one thing that this game is really lacking in is content. Now, when this game was first released, whenever I'm making this video, at the current time there are only 9 characters to pick from. Now, this isn't a major gripe considering that the game is only $20 right now for the standard edition, but still, that is not a lot of characters to pick from. Also considering that you have a 3 versus 3 fighting system similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So when you're going through arcade mode, you're going to be seeing these characters over and over and over again. And even though I explained the story at the beginning of this video, there is no urgency to explain what is actually going on as far as story-wise through arcade mode. There's no explaining why Lord Draken is doing this. There's no explanation of what the Power Rangers are going to try to do to stop him. It's just, here's the bad guy. Stop him. And not even that much is established until the final level of the arcade mode with each character. I will say a nice feature, though, is that if you want to know a little bit more about the characters, there is a character info button on the character select screen that gives a brief synopsis on the said character, even though I would have preferred it if they actually showed what series they were from. What this game could really use are some actual cutscenes to better expand in explaining what the story is, what each character is going through, and even an ending for each character, because throughout arcade mode, there are still images with some text of the characters talking back and forth to each other, but it could use so much more than that. And speaking of which, there is almost absolutely no voice acting in this game. Now, I understand this could probably be a budget issue with the game company because it does take a lot of money to get big name celebrities such as Jason David Frank or Austin St. John to reprise their roles as Tommy or Jason. But even then, they could get people to sound like them to do some voice acting. Literally, I think this game could stand out a lot more, even with just the standard cutout of the character and some text if there was some dialogue and voice acting to go along with it. And while I appreciate the fact that you can actually summon the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord and the Dragonzord, it would also help if you had different Megazords from different Power Ranger series, considering that you also have Power Rangers from SPD, Lost Galaxy, and Super Megaforce. Where are those Megazords at? Well, we'll have to wait and see, considering that this game is going to have a season pass with some more characters coming out soon, and hopefully some more content to go along with it. Like I said earlier, the fact that this game has so little character selection isn't really a big gripe considering of how cheap the game is right now, and I mean that in price, not production. Also, this is worth noting, there is an online mode where there are casual and ranked matches, and it looks like there's going to be an actual ranking system, but me personally, I'm not big of an online gamer as far as fighting game competitions online, so I'm just going to pass on that personally. So for my final thoughts, this is a good game. The gameplay is really fun, it's very fast paced, it's easy to pick up, it's just there is so much room for extra content, and it has so much potential to be more than just an okay game, which at this point is what it is. Now like I said, there is a season pass to increase the amount of characters that you're going to be able to play as, but I would really have liked to see more character selection and just a bit more added to this game. It feels like it's almost like it's a beta in this process, but not a bad beta. It literally is a finished product, but at the same time, it feels like it has so much room to expand, so much more it could give us, but unfortunately does not. So guys, that's gonna be it for this review. I'm gonna give this game a personal 7 out of 10 because I am a little biased considering that I am a big Power Rangers fan 
But like I said, it could just use so much more content to make it stand out even more. But like I said, this is just my two cents. What do you guys think of the game? Make sure to comment down below and let me know what you think. And until next time, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Take care.